In this video, we'll take a look at a reaction we should be very familiar with, the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen. In this container, we have 8 moles of hydrogen and we have 7 moles of oxygen. We'll assume that each of the hydrogen and oxygens drawn represents a mole of that molecule. The coefficients in the balanced chemical equation tell us that when 2 moles of hydrogen react with 1 mole of oxygen, they produce 2 moles of water. But we don't have 2 moles of hydrogen and 1 mole of oxygen. The actual amounts in the container are different. So exactly how much water will we be able to produce from the quantities in the container? To answer this question, we'll look at two other containers. This container will have the 8 moles of hydrogen and as much oxygen as you could possibly want or need, and the other container will have the 7 moles of oxygen and all of the hydrogen you could need. Let's start with this container. Since there is an infinite amount of oxygen, it's only the limited quantity of hydrogen that will limit how much water we can make. The hydrogen is the limiting reagent in this container. Let's see how much water we could make if all of the hydrogen in this container were consumed. We have 8 moles of hydrogen, and so that's where we start. We also said that we need 2 moles of hydrogen used for every 2 moles of water produced. We know this relationship because of the balanced equation. The coefficients in the equation tell us the ratio of reactants to products. In this case, the 2s before the hydrogen and water tell us that the ratio of hydrogen to water is 2 to 2. We use this ratio as a conversion factor to calculate the maximum amount of water that can form from 8 moles of hydrogen. When we multiply everything out, we get that if 8 moles of hydrogen were to react with an excess of oxygen, then we produce 8 moles of water. So if we have 8 moles of hydrogen and all of the oxygen we could ever want, then we would produce 8 moles of water since hydrogen is the limiting reagent. Let's do the same thing, this time focusing on the other container. How much water can we make if all of the oxygen were consumed? Since we have an infinite amount of hydrogen in this container, it is the oxygen that will be the limiting reagent. We have 7 moles of oxygen, and so we'll start with that. What is the relationship between the amount of oxygen used and the amount of water produced? Looking at the balanced chemical equation, we see that 1 mole of oxygen is needed to produce 2 moles of water. We'll use this ratio as the conversion factor to calculate the amount of water that can be produced from 7 moles of oxygen. What is this amount? Like we said earlier, when 1 mole of oxygen reacts, then 2 moles of water are produced. Once we multiply 7 moles of oxygen with this ratio, we get that the maximum amount of water that can form is 14 moles. So let's recap. If our limiting reagent is hydrogen and we have 8 moles of it, then we can produce 8 moles of water. If our limiting reagent is oxygen, and we have 7 moles of it, then we can produce 14 moles of water. So what about the first container we looked at? It doesn't have an infinite amount of either reactant. It has a finite amount of both oxygen and hydrogen. If the reaction to make water were to proceed, which reactant would run out first? Let's investigate. We see that two hydrogen molecules react with one oxygen to make two waters. We'll continue this process until we run out of one or both reactants. We see that we run out of hydrogen first and that there are still leftover oxygen molecules in the container. So hydrogen, the substance that runs out first, is our limiting reagent. It limits the amount of product that can be made. Oxygen, on the other hand, is said to be in excess because we still have oxygen even when all of the hydrogen is used up. To determine the amount of product we can make, we need to identify the limiting reagent first. To do that, we follow the same process we did a moment ago. We assume each substance is the limiting reagent and predict how much product would be made if it were consumed completely. The one that makes the least amount of product is the limiting reagent. So which substance is the limiting reagent in this problem? And what is the maximum amount of water that can be formed? Because hydrogen is the limiting reagent, the maximum amount of water that can form is 8 moles, as we saw. The fact that we had fewer moles of oxygen at the beginning may make you think that this means that oxygen should be the limiting reagent, but it's not. You cannot determine the limiting reagent without following the procedure we just followed. To finish up, when the reaction is done, our container that originally had 8 moles of hydrogen and 7 moles of oxygen will look like this. We will have none of the limiting reagents, hydrogen, left over, and we will have 8 moles of water. But how much oxygen is left? To form the 8 moles of water, 
we needed four moles of oxygen. That means that three moles of oxygen are left over, which can also be found in our container. Every stoichiometry problem will look exactly like this. We draw a container with moles, determine which of the reactants is limiting, and then determine the amount of products made and reactants remaining.